Hi everyone and welcome back to another exciting week of learning about Power Apps. In this week's episode, we're going to learn how to integrate Power Apps with Teams. We're going to be using a Power App, we're going to be using Teams, and we're going to be using actionable cards. We're going to be using a field from a Power App that will trigger this flow that will send an actionable card back to Teams. In part two, I'll show you how the user can actually respond to that actionable card and send that response back to Power Apps. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have our app set up correctly with the fields that we need to to be able to successfully create the Power Automate flow. So inside of our feedback form, we have the subject description and the assigned to. The assigned to is a lookup to the people table and this is what we're going to use to grab the email to send the Teams ping to the appropriate person. In here, we wanna make sure that we have the email and an email for that person so that we can grab that email from the person table and send them a Teams ping. So now we wanna make sure that we're adding this new flow inside of the feedback solution to make sure that when we are ready to package it, it is all in the same solution. So I clicked on new automation, cloud flow and automated. We're going to skip this step and start building and creating the trigger right within the designer. I'm gonna click on Microsoft Dataverse and I'm gonna say, when a row is added, modified, or deleted. I'm going to select when a row is added or modified. We're going to select the feedback table. And we're going to select organization. We're going to give this a name. And we're going to create our first action step. This is going to be a get row by ID for the person table so that we're able to grab the email directly from that person table. People, and then when we get to row by ID, we're actually going to look for that assigned to value coming from the feedback table. So I'll select this and I'll go ahead and click Save. Then in order to actually grab that email, we're gonna use the Compose action. And we'll just start typing email here. And as you can see, my action for get row by ID grabs that email and that should bring it up. Next, we wanna add the um, posting a Teams, um, posting an adaptive card and waiting for a respond through Teams. Click on that first one. We're going to leave that as Flowbot. We're going to change post in to chat with Flowbot. And for the message, we're actually gonna go into the adaptive card designer and start playing around with that there and grab the JSON and paste it in here. So I navigated to adaptivecards.io slash designer and you'll get this neat little designer where you're able to play around with different templates and then grab the JSON from here and paste it into that Power Automate um, teams action. So I've actually already created a custom one for this demo and I'm actually just going to copy and paste it in here so we can see what that looks like. I'm just going to remove this entire thing and it's going to look something like this. We're going to say uh, feedback as the header at the top, um, some info in the body, 
and we're going to either accept or decline that feedback to take ownership of that feedback. So that's what our Teams ping will look like. So I'm just gonna grab that same JSON and I'm going to paste it into this message here. And I'll show you what this looks like and I'll just remove these. So we're going to dynamically pull the assigned to person's name. We'll grab their first name so it's better. And then for subject, same thing, but we're going to be grabbing the subject from the original table, which is the feedback table, not the get row by ID table or get row by ID action. Same thing with this description. You'll notice that this is the, uh, the first, um, this is the trigger. So we're going to grab it from that feedback table, not the get row by ID table. And same thing for feedback. You can update this message however you want. And then for recipient, we're going to add the output of the compose, which is that email. And we'll go ahead and save. All right, let's go ahead and test this flow. So I'll click test. I'll do a manual test. Once this has become a blank screen and it's a loading screen, I'll go over to my model driven app and do a quick test. So I clicked on new feedback. I'll assign this to myself because I know that I have an email. And once we have the feedback response set up in the second part of this video, it will populate here. So I'll go ahead and save. And I'll go over to my flow to make sure that it's running. Looks like it is running. It's running all the way through. And then I'll go over to my teams and I should see the actionable card coming through the Power Automate chat. Just like how I set it up in the Adaptive Card Designer, you'll see that it's pulling my first name. It's pulling the feedback subject dynamically, the description, and once we have the response set up, we'll be able to click accept and submit. All right, so let's go ahead and response since our Power Automate flow is waiting for that response. We're not yet going to be writing back to the model driven app, which is fine. That will be in part two of this video. You'll see that it'll say thanks for your feedback and if we go back to the Power Automate flow, you'll see that it has been completed. In part two, we'll be grabbing this um, data object and parsing the string to be able to grab that response. So since I clicked on accept, uh, this data response was one. So we'll need to write that response back to the feedback response field in the feedback form in our model driven app. Stay tuned and come back for part two. Thanks.